Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will talk about inheritance of one gene. So what do we mean by that? When we say one gene, we mean one contrasting trait. For example, if we talk about the height of a plant, we are only going to talk about the height. We are not bothered whether what is the shape of the seed, what is the color of the seed. So we are not bothered about any other contrasting trait. So for to, to keep things simple, first we will try to understand with one gene, that is with one trait, how one particular trait gets inherited from one generation to the next generation. So if you look at yourself, you might have uh, inherited multiple traits from your father. Similarly, you might have inherited multiple traits from your mother. So in order to understand how that inheritance happens, we will start from the simple scenarios. And the simple scenario begins with inheritance of one gene. So you just inheriting one particular trait from your parent, right? So in order, in under this topic, we will talk about the experiments which were performed by Mendel because that was the beginning of uh, genetics. So we will first try to see what was the experiment that Mendel did, and then we'll try to understand and conclude from the experiment. So let us look at Mendel's experiment. So what did he do? Now in sexual reproduction, both parents contribute to the traits which are seen in the child. Now Mendel with his experiment find out, found out the principles based on which it can be guessed how characters will be inherited or passed to the offspring. So for that purpose, what he did was he took tall pea plants and dwarf pea plants and crossed them with each other. So he did cross pollination. So this is a tall plant, this is a dwarf plant, dwarf plant or short plant, whatever you call it. So he cross pollinated tall pea plants with dwarf pea plants just to see that how the traits are being passed on to the next generations. And what did he found? So when he crossed a tall plant with a short plant, what was the result? He found that all the F1 generation, that is the first filial generation. Now F1 generation, the full form of F1 is first filial or filial 1 progeny. Now the meaning of filial is offspring of a cross. So the word filial means offspring of a cross. So it is like offspring related or filial related. That is called filial generation. Now whenever we do a cross, now first generation will be the parent generation. So both the parents are crossed. So what is produced? F1 generation. That is first filial generation. Again, if we cross the first filial generation, then what is produced? That is F2 generation or second filial generation. So that is how we say that generation after generation organisms are being produced. So we will be using this notation F1 and F2. So he found that in the F1 generation, that is the first progeny, all the plants were tall. So this was the result, that all the plants were tall. So here one plant was tall, the other plant was dwarf. But when they were crossed together, all the plants were tall. So now it was quite surprising, right, that when one of the parent was dwarf, why none of the uh, plants which were being produced were dwarf, all of them were tall. So that was his, the first, that was the first experiment which was uh, performed by Mendel. Now this tall plant, now how do we denote the, the characteristic of this plant? Which trait are we considering here? We are just considering the tall trait. Now any gene, so that trait is present where? In the gene and how do we denote the gene? By two letters. So this is a tall plant which is a pure bread. That means it will have both the alleles tall. So it should get both the alleles from its parents as tall. So this will be denoted by capital T, capital T. How do we denote the dwarf plant? It will be denoted by small t, small t. Now, what about these which were produced? That we will see a little later. That how do we know what exactly is contained in their alleles? But the result was that in the first generation, all the plants were tall. Now, what did he do? He self-pollinated the tall F1 plants. So, whichever plants were produced in the F1 generation, he self-pollinated those plants. That means the same plant was being pollinated by itself. So, within the same plant. 
So this was the F1 plant which was produced. So the F1 plant was like crossed with itself you can say. Then what was produced? So what was produced was the F2 generation. So here F2 generation was produced. Right? And what was this? This was the F1 generation. Correct? So what was seen in the F2 generation? It was seen that most of the plants were tall but some of them were dwarf also. So out of four, one plant was dwarf and all others were tall. So now this was even more surprising because in the F1 generation, the plants which were produced were all tall. So now when the tall plants were self-pollinated, so there is no role of a dwarf plant. But then how come this dwarf plant appeared here? So this was a very surprising conclusion or this was a very surprising observation. You can say that, that in the first generation, there was no dwarf plant, even though one of the parents was dwarf. In the second generation, there was a dwarf plant which was produced, even though there was no dwarf plant in the F1 generation. So even though there was no dwarf in the immediate parents, still the plant which was produced here was a dwarf plant. So this gave a thought to Mendel. Now Mendel got to know that means this dwarf characteristic was hidden somewhere in the F1 generation. So somewhere it was there but it was not getting expressed. It was hidden somewhere. And then in the F2 generation it again got expressed. So that was Mendel's thought on this. But in order to prove that what did he do? He, he tried to explain it in this way. So this was Mendel's conclusion from his experiment. So the first conclusion was that F1 generation plant were all tall. But even though the trait which got expressed was tall, but the dwarf trait was also present in the F1 generation, but it was hidden. And then it got expressed later in the F2 generation. So as per Mendel, the dwarf trait was also present in the F1 generation but it was hidden in F1 and since it was hidden therefore we could not see it so we saw all the plants as tall because the dwarf trait was being hidden and how do we know it was hidden because in the F2 generation the dwarf trait came back because 25% of the plants were short here so that means the dwarf trait was hidden in F1 generation but it again got expressed in F2 generation. So that was one thing that Mendel concluded that there is a possibility that a particular trait can remain hidden sometimes and then it can get express itself later in the next generation. So that was one thing. The second thing that he concluded was that there was something that was being passed on from one generation to other generation without any change at all. That means as per Mendel, there were certain things which were, for example, here in this case, the plant height was the trait, right? Whether the plant is going to be tall or it is going to be short. So now that this trait was being passed on from the parental generation to the F1 generation, from F1 generation to F2 generation and without any change because the dwarf plant which was seen in F2 generation, they were exactly similar to the dwarf plants which were there in the parental generation. That means the trait is being carried on from one generation to the next generation without any change. As it is, it is being carried on from one generation to the next generation. So that was another thing which Mendel uh, concluded from this experiment. And what is this something that is being passed on from one generation to another? Mendel called them as the inheritance factor. That inheritance factor is being passed on from one generation to the next generation without any change. Now th this factor is what we call them as genes today. Now Mendel did not uh, uh, use or coin the term gene. The gene term came up quite later. That time Mendel used to call them as factors or inheritance factors. Now the question was, so how was this factor being carried on from one generation to another generation? So that was the important question now. So this factor is what we call as gene today. So this is what we know as gene today. But as per Mendel, this was factor. So what did Mendel say? Mendel say that factor was being passed on from one generation, for example, from the parental generation to the F1 generation to F2 generation in a very stable way, that is stably, without much change. So that was Mendel's conclusion. So with this 
So the overall conclusion which he gave was two copies of a trait are inherited in each sexually reproducing organism. So what do we mean by two copies of a trait? So what is the trait in this um, experiment, in Mendel's experiment, what is the trait that we are talking about? We are talking about the height of the plant, right? That is the trait. And what are the two copies? Two copies are the two uh, the height of the plant which is inherited, one copy inherited from the father, the other copy inherited from the mother. So the purpose of saying is that in any sexually reproducing organism, there has to be two parents. We need two parents for sexual reproduction. Now, each parent will contribute one copy of a trait. So every individual will have two copies of the trait. So here in this example, if you talk about any plant, if a plant is tall, the plant can be capital T, capital T, that means capital T from mother, another capital T from father. So this is a tall plant. A plant can be capital T, small t, that means a capital T from father and a small t from mother. A plant can also be small t, small t, that is a small t or short or dwarf, from father, dwarf from mother. So this plant is going to be a dwarf or a short plant, right? But the question is, here both are tall. That is why the plant was tall. Now, how do we know which trait gets expressed and which trait gets hidden? Now, if both are the same, then there is no confusion, right? If both are for tall, obviously the tall trait will get expressed because there is no dwarf trait. But if one is tall and the other one is dwarf, then what will happen? Then only one trait will get expressed and the other trait will remain hidden. Right? So now you are getting my point. So here what, what might have happened in the F1 generation is that these plants were tall because the tall trait got expressed. So the plants appeared tall. But the dwarf trait was also present but it was hidden. So none of the plants were dwarf because all of the expressed trait was tall. So they all appeared tall but the dwarf trait was there and in the next generation this trait got expressed as 25% of the short plants. Right? Now what is this? What is this concept of one trait being uh, expressed and the other being hidden? That is where the principle of dominance comes into picture. Now we will talk about dominance in detail. So I hope till here it is clear that what he refers to, he first performed an experiment just to see what kind of um, uh, generations are being produced. So he did a very simple experiment. Tall plants crossed with short plants. He found all were tall. And then he self-pollinated the uh, F1 generation and he found that some plants which were produced in the F2 generation were short. So with these experiments, he concluded that every trait will have two copies in an organism. One copy will come from the mother, the other copy will come from the father. So that is going to be universal in all sexually reproducing organisms. Now, which trait will express depends upon the dominance of the trait. So, whichever trait will be dominating, that dominant trait will get expressed and the other trait will remain hidden. So, now let us try to understand what are these factors or what are these genes. So, let us first talk about gene. Once we are clear with gene, then we will go ahead and talk about the dominance. Thank you. Please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.